السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise is due to Allah we praise him and we seek his forgiveness and we ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and companions and all those who hold firm upon the sunnah until yawm al-qiyamah we had a couple interesting durus in the last couple of weeks with regards to zakat alhamdulillah insha'Allah a more firm and established understanding of zakat has been brought to us and been brought to light in the Ta'ala. And if there are any other questions, we will also answer them in the Allah Ta'ala, if Allah wills, in the Q&A time. Jazakumullah khair. But today, we study the fourth pillar of Islam. The fourth pillar of Islam, brothers and sisters, being a song, a song, fasting. The fourth pillar of Islam is to fast for the blessed and greatest month of the 12 months of the year, which is Ramadan. Why do we fast Ramadan? It is an obligation upon the slaves of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to do so as he said. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Chapter 2, verse 183. O you who believe, fasting has been made obligatory upon you as it was ob obligated upon those before you, so you may obtain piety. From this, we understand that the obligation of fasting, the obligation of psalm, the fard of psalm had come from, as an order from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as he had ordered the nations before us. So the nations before us, they were fasting, there were nations who fasted too. However, Allah obligated it upon us in the month of Ramadan. And fasting, as the Shaykh here mentions, he actualizes taqwa. It proves a person's taqwa and it actualizes that person's taqwa of Allah and it purifies the soul from heedlessness and following its lusts and desires. And inshallah will follow with why the Shaykh has men mentioned such. It causes the soul to patiently avoid what it desires. What do we desire as per what is halal for us? Let's not talk about what is haram, but from what is halal for us, what our soul desires from what it naturally craves, being food and water and permissible sexual relations. Correct. So Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has forbidden this upon the fasting person why? In order to teach the soul, to keep the soul in line, in order to purify the soul. So when the soul is able to do this by fasting, it becomes easy for it to leave the prohibited matters. When one person teaches his soul to abstain from that which is halal for him, then when it, become, when it comes to the matters of haram, the soul finds it easier to let them go. Why? Because he's trained himself or she has trained herself. That, that which was halal for me, I've left it. And what was haram? Easy, no problem. I'll let it go. It is a protection for the person from sins and a protection from the anger of his Lord. It contains a great deal of benefit, good and blessing. Ramadan is one month during the year. 
We all know it is one month during the year, which Allah has obligated upon his slaves to fast throughout that month. Thus, whoever is granted success in performing the proper manner has increased in good for the entire year. He fasts during the month, but the traces of the fast remain throughout the whole year by the permission of Allah. Some further points adding on to the, what has mentioned by Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz. Rahimahullah. We know fasting was obligated upon the people, but do we know which year in the calendar of the Muslims was fasting obligated upon us? Of second of the Hijrah. Naam, second year of the Hijrah. Barakallah. Let us rewind. We know if you were to talk to, to non Muslims about Islam, Many of them who know Muslims, what do they know about us? We fast. Or oh, when's your Ramadan? Or oh, you just finished Ramadan. Yeah, that's when you fast from dawn till dusk, so on. So they know it's an action which is widespread. You even see it in, in uh, Woolies and in Coles. They say Ramadan Mubarak. It's known. It's an action that is known. Sahwalala. It is. Propagated. Alhamdulillah. This is good. I'm not saying this is anything bad. It's very good. Alhamdulillah. The image of Islam is spread throughout the world. However, as the brother Barakallah Fihi mentioned, it was obligated upon us as Muslims on which year? The second year after Hijrah. How many years did the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spend in Mecca? 13 years. After 13 years, two years after that, fasting was obligated upon the Muslims. So for 15 years, what were the Muslims doing? As a matter of fact, the prophethood of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was how long? 23 years. So for 15 years, Ramadan was not obligated upon the Muslims. What were, what were the Muslims actualizing? Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. The first pillar of Islam. Then how many years after the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did the prayer become obligated upon us? Isra al Mi'raj, ten years after the prophethood of the of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the second year of Hijrah was fasting. Barakallahu fikum. This puts things in a timeline. We know how important fasting is in our deen. It is a pillar of Islam. Now we know truly how important understanding, studying, actualizing, and performing Tawheed to the best of our abilities is. Because that's what Islam was built upon for so many years. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught it. And then these major f actions of our deen came into play and fundamentals of our deen, such as fasting of Ramadan. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fasted nine Ramadans before he passed away. Siyam in the Arabic language, does anybody know what it means? It means to withhold from something. Siyam means to withhold from something, such as speech or walking. However, the religious terminology of Siyam is to withhold with intention. This is the parts that we write down, inshallah. Yeah? The religious meaning of Siyam is to withhold with intention. From that which would break one's fast through action or spiritual violation, beginning from the time of the true dawn, Fajr, until the sun sets, Maghrib. So, if a person, this is a question being posed now, if a person merely withholds from food and water, 
from dawn till dusk without intention is he a sahib no religiously he's not linguistically he is does that make sense islamically he is not linguistically being because withholding from something is siyam in arabic terms however religiously it's not because he needs intention dalil does anyone know dalil innama al-a'mal bin-niyat qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam innama al-a'mal bin-niyat wa li kulli mir'in wa innama li kulli mir'in ma nawa faman kanat hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. The Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم said, actions are based on their intention, and each person will be rewarded according to what he intended. So whoever's migration was for Allah and His Messenger, his migration was for Allah and His Messenger. But whoever's migration was for a worldly gain or for a woman he wishes to marry, his migration is for whatever he migrated for. So your actions are based upon your intention. Therefore, one must have the intention that it is fasting for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala in order to be considered siyam for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala. Fasting has two aspects. It's physical and it's spiritual. The physical aspect is to withhold with intent niya from eating, drink, drinking and sexual intercourse. The moral aspect, the moral or spiritual aspect is to withhold from backbiting, carrying tales, Rumor-mongering, cursing, speaking with falsehood, lying, using foul language, looking at that which is prohibited, and listening to that which is prohibited. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? I will touch on something small. When we know looking at what, which, that which is prohibited, we know the movies which are prohibited. Pornography, that which is prohibited. Looking at women that are undressed, even if they're not fully undressed, is prohibited. Listening, what do we know? Listening to slander, backbiting. What else? Music, barakallahu Music is haram to listen to. But often people listen to music outside of Ramadan. So when Ramadan comes about, they choose not to listen to music anymore. So they start listening to Quran. Listening to Quran. This is something which Allah wa ta'ala is pleased with. Then they feel that listening to Quran is nice, but I need something different. So they turn to which they believe to be halal. Other than Quran. And what is something the common Muslim often perceives to be halal, yet in the eyes of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala it is haram? Anashid. Barakallahu feek. Anashid. Anashid are something that which was introduced into the religion that the religion is free from. And Anashid does not include, when I mention Anashid, it does not include poetry and the likes of poetry. Let that be made clear. And insha'Allah ta'ala, for those who wish to unnerve the, the, uh, the fatawa with regards to Anashid, listen to the fatawa of Shaykh Saleh al fawzan and the likes. Hafizahullah ta'ala. Anashid have come today, and I'm not talking also the ones that come with music and so on. Obviously with the musical instruments, we know this is haram. The names such as Mahir Zain and, uh, and uh, Yusuf Islam and I don't know anymore. 
There may be some more. These are things, these are songs which are forbidden for us to listen to. And wallahi, some of them with, within them, they contain shirk. Billah. They contain shirk. One of the ulama was asked with regards to a seiri which is sold in the lands of the Haramain. May Allah bless those lands. The song has within it, Ya Qayba. On the melody and so on. And he was asked, is this song considered shirk? And he said, if this isn't shirk, then what is shirk? When we say, Ya, it is any that, we are calling upon. And whom do we call upon alone? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Not Taiba. Medina. It's a children's song. Very catchy on the children's tongue. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala protect us. This is just a warning for us, insha'Allah ta'ala. Now when Ramadan comes about, stick to that which is good. The shaitan will still try to deceive you thinking you're committing that which Allah is pleased with. Yeah, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is not. I will finish this topic there. If there's any questions, we talk about it later. Bismillah ta'ala. The spiritual violations reduce or they diminish the reward of the fasting person and can even leave a person with no reward whatsoever. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, whoever does not give up false speech and acting on it, an ignorant behavior, then Allah is not in need of, giving, of him giving up his food and drink. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, fasting is not just from food and drink. It is also from vain speech and lewd conduct. So the one who withholds from the physical violations of fasting, but does not withhold from the spiritual violations, he has not truly fasted. He has not truly fasted in a manner that Allah wa ta'ala has made incumbent upon him. That Allah has required from him. It is possible that such a person receives no reward for their fast. Or he receives a less of a reward. Also, we know that the fasting is between when? Fajr and Maghrib, between Fajr and Maghrib. As Muslims, as Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah, following the manhaj of the Salaf al-Salih, we follow the Sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say with regards to starting your fast and ending your fast? Delay it. Delay your fast to the time that it enters. So do not start fasting. Pre, prior to when Fajr hits, the true Fajr hits. And when breaking the fast, what did the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Hasten to do so. So as soon as Maghrib comes about, as soon as the Mu'addin calls for Maghrib, hasten to break your fast. Have we touched upon the two Fajrs in the Monday Dars? We haven't. I'll briefly speak about it inshaAllah Ta'ala and maybe touch more onto it in the question and answer. There are two fajrs, the two dawns, the false dawn and the true dawn. The true dawn is the one in which we follow to begin our fast. We begin our fast from the true dawn, not from the false dawn. And also we do not begin our fast on the calendars which have written on them in sack. That is not when... We begin our fast. We begin our fast on the true dawn time. When you hear the Mu'addin, if you're in a Muslim country, you hear the Mu'addin for the Adhan of Fajr, he makes his Adhan, that's it. That's when you begin your fast. And it's the second Adhan. The second Adhan of Fajr. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ And eat and drink until the white thread of dawn appears to you. 
distinct from the black thread. Are we talk, is it Allah wa ta'ala telling us about thread? Or is He telling us about the light in the sky that we see? The white light that comes out from the darkness. This refers to the second true fajr. And a Muslim fasts until sunset. So once the sun has set in the west and darkness appears in the east, the fast comes to an end in accordance with the saying of Allah, ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Then complete your fast till the night fall. And due to the saying of the Prophet ﷺ, whom said, If the night appears from over here, and the day ends from over there, and the sun has set, the fasting person breaks his fast. The wisdom behind fasting is clear. Hikmah behind fasting is clear. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, observing the fast is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become pious. The fast prevents the soul from following its desires, its lusts, eating, drinking, sexual relations. Because these things, they can come to burden the soul. If they are used in excess, they may come to burden the soul. And the ulama have given many scriptures with regards to this. And I believe it's Ibn Qayyim who mentions much about it. Talking too much, eating too much, drinking too much, sleeping too much. These are things which may overburden the soul. Therefore, fasting has come to stop the soul from being heedless, to returning that soul to the taqwa of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. If a person is continually occupied with eating and drinking and satisfying his desires, then it will lead him to ingratitude and transgression. And to become negligent of the remembrance of Allah. But when one fasts, when one observes Siyam, he breaks the strength of his desires as well as his longing for food and drink. This is from the wisdom of Siyam. And that constricts the path of Shaitan from reaching the human. Because the Shaitan. He flows through the body like the blood flows through the veins. So when food and drink has been constricted upon that person from the fasting, likewise, the shaitan's ability to overpower a person has been restricted. And this allows the soul to be tamed, to be taught. That it must have its boundaries. It must restrict itself. And not be fully immersed in its desires. Which Allah has still made halal for it. It teaches the soul. This is for us to learn in order to return. To thanking Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. To be grateful for everything that we have. And not to be unthankful. For what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us from even the most smallest of blessings. Barakallahu feekum. It is for this reason that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said, <coughs> so that you may become pious. So by fasting one achieves taqwa and realizes his weak state, his immense need for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, that we always need Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Fasting also, my brothers and sisters, take something from our hunger and our thirst. It makes a person hungry and thirsty. And he is reminded of those who are in need. What does it do to a person? It humbles them. He humbles the rich. He humbles the poor. He humbles the middle class. So that we may remember those who were not as fortunate as us 
who have not been given as much blessing as we have with regards to the daily food intake, water and so on. So we remember them in order to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can so easily take it all away from us. So we thank Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and we pay that which is due upon us from our zakat. And insha'Allah, furthermore, from our sadaqah. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in Hadith Qudsi. Can anyone tell me what a Hadith Qudsi is? It's a Hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. <coughs> Barak Allah fi. So, stated in a Hadith Qudsi that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, Fasting is for me. And I will reward the fasting person due to it because he leaves off his desires. His food and drink for my sake and the odor from his mouth of a fasting person is better in the sight of Allah than the fragrance of musk. So even if the odor is repugnant to people, even if the odor, the bad breath that people have, they don't like it, it is beloved to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala loves that smell because he knows it came due to an action performed for his sake sincerely and alone. This is the excellence of fasting over the rest of the deeds. It is a tremendous act because it is an act for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala purely and alone. He says this is for him. The Salaf would fast much from Ramadan obviously and that which comes after Ramadan do we know any of the the optional fasts that come after Ramadan six from Shawwal that comes straight after Ramadan we have Dhul Hijjah Dhul Hijjah to fast the, the, the nine days of Dhul Hijjah the day of Arafah specifically the Sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every Monday and Thursday. The white, the white days which are 13, 14, 15th of every month significant because why, what's, why they call white days? The middle of the month when we have full moon. It's when we have a full moon. Ashura, the day where Ahl Sunnah, they love this day based on the fact that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us to fast that day, a day for us and for us alone. Sah? Anyone else have anything got to do with that day? No, they try to hijack it. However, this is for the Muslims based on the fact that, Fadl? Because Allah wa ta'ala saved Musa and Bani Israel on that day from Fir'aun. That's the significance of that day. Any other days? Shawwal we mentioned. Sha'ban. Any days fasting in Sha'ban that we know of that is significant? No, Wallahu alam. No. Barakallahu fikum. So these are the days that are from the Sunan. And also, which I would like to mention for the single men, that the... Uh, the recommendation for those who are single is to fast more. Why? Because it restricts the body from trying to perform the desires in which it wishes to perform. Fast, inshaAllah ta'ala, in order to withhold yourself from following your desires. And likewise, the women. Inshallah, we'll leave it here. Bismillah ta'ala, if Allah wills, next week we'll, come, we'll, we'll enter into matters of fiqh with regards to fasting, common questions that are asked throughout Ramadan. And we'll move on to the last pillar, which is Hajj. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.